Hello everyone. I'm Dr. Sapna Dadwal. I'm working as a professor in the Department of Management of St. Andrews Institute of Technology and Management. This is lecture 28 of Business Law of Unit 4. This is last lecture of Unit 4 or Business Law. With this lecture, I'm completing the syllabus of Business Law, which is taught in BBA, fourth semester of MDU curriculum. So the topic I'm going uh, the topic I'm going to cover in this lecture are power and functions of PIO that is public information officers exemptions from disclosure of information central and state information commissions appeals burden of proof penalties so these are the topics I'm going to cover in this lecture that is lecture number 28 last lecture of business law. So I'm starting with power and functions of PIO, that is public information officers. I've already uh, discussed in my last lecture who are public information officers. Public information officers are the people who, who give information to the people who are seeking information from public authorities. So every, this is the responsibility of the every public authority as per the act, they have to appoint PIOs to give information to the people seeking information or requesting information from that public authority. Now, PIOs or public information officers, they do have some powers and functions. Um, uh, their, their functions are as follows the first is to share information with public so PIO acquires information organizes and distribute the information to the seeking people or to seeking people then PIO gives reasonable assistance to people who cannot read the information sometimes PIO has to read orally the information required by the persons he assists them by providing orally information then he shall transfer within five days if the trans information is of other public office if the information asked by the PIO doesn't belong to his public authority then he should transfer that particular information particular application to the concerned public office within five days of accepting that application. So this is his responsibility. Now PIO may seek assistance of any other officer for the proper discharge of his duties. So he can, he can take help of any officer of that particular uh, public authority for discharging his duties. Then PIO should inform the requesting person within 30 days of the request. He should get, provide information within 30 days. As per the act, he has to provide the information within 30 days of the uh, within 30 days of after getting application. So, next one is where the information requested concerns the life or liberty of a person. He shall provide information within 48 hours so then it, it becomes his duty as with the act he has to provide information to that person within 48 hours after receiving the application the next one is if PIO fails to give decision on the request within the period that is 30 days in case of simple request in case of emergency within 48 hours then he shall be deemed to have refused to the request and where the request had been rejected, the PIO must inform the application. He must communicate it to the applicant that his information cannot be given to him. And so the, these are the functions of the information officers. Now, owners on the PO. PIO, the total owners rest with the PIO in providing the information sought within the stipulated period of time that is 30 days. They are the interface between the citizen and the organization. 
So they are the link between uh, interface between citizen uh, and public authority. So the applicant may be uh, the applicant may be aggrieved with way information is provided, the reason for rejection of the request, then time involved in supply of information, the quantum of amount charged as he fee as fees. So these are the reasons the applicants may get agreed for with PIO that may uh, he may think that he uh, he hasn't got the information he has uh, requested for or maybe when in case of rejection he may ask the rejection uh, reason for the rejection at the time he wasn't supplied uh, information on time then he may ask the reason of the uh, supply of information then he may ask that quantum um, uh, or maybe quantum or amount charged on fees he may feel that he is charged more. So depending upon findings, the penalty is levied on the PIO only. If, if, if there is any resolution, if there is any uh, problem between the aggrieved, both the parties, the aggrieved one, and if it is found that PIO is guilty or PI, it is PIO's fault, then PIO may be charged with the maybe levied uh, penalty and that penalty is levied on only on PIO. So the burden is, is on the PIO that he has to act reasonably and diligently before information commission. They have to, PIO have to prove that they have acted in good faith supporting the same with documented evidence. It is, it is the burden is on PIO, they have to prove that whatever they have decided, if they have refused, the why they have refused, if they are not able to supply information on time, so what, are, what was the reason behind, and that reason should be proper. Now the next topic is exemptions from disclosure of information. Section 8 of the Act sets out certain information that is exempted from the disclosure. So when a request is made to public authorities seeking information that falls within any of the following categories, Section 8 exempts a public authority from obligation of disclosure of information. So these are the exemptions. According to this, this information cannot be disclosed to any citizen. The first is information that would affect sovereign, uh, sovereignty and integrity of India the security, strategic, scientific or economic interest of the state, relation with foreign state, etc. In such cases, the information cannot be disclosed to anyone. So this is an exemption from RTI, Right to Information Act. Now second is information expressly forbidden by the court of law. So there are some information which is forbidden by court of law to disclose it to anyone. So such information cannot be given to anyone. And third is information, the disclosure of which cause breach of privilege of parliament or state legislation. So this is again exemption. Then fourth one is information including trade secrets or intellectual property, the disclosure of which would harm the competitive position of third party. So such information again cannot be disclosed to anyone. The next one is information available to a person in his fiduciary relationship. He cannot disclose it. Then information received in confidence, in confidence from a foreign government. That's true. This information cannot be disclosed to anyone. The next one is information that would endanger the life of any person. Such information cannot be disclosed to anyone. Information that would impede the process of inves investigation. Next one is information which relates to personal information. The disclosure of which has no relationship to any activity or interest or which would cause unwarranted invasion of privacy of the individual. Th this type of information or personal nature information cannot be disclosed it to other person. Then next is where disclosure 
of information would involve an infringement of copyright subsisting in a person other than the state. So this information again cannot be disclosed to anyone. So these are the exemptions to right of information act. Now there is one small topic third party information. I would like to discuss it here with the information that is sought to be assessed accessed from a public authority relates to or has been supplied by third party. So the PIO is required under section 11 of the act to notify such third and invites its submission. The submission of the third party shall be kept in view by the public authority while deciding on the disclosure of information. So with, where such disclosure relate to commercial secrets of a third party, a public authority can decline access to such information. Now the next topic is Central and State Information Commission. So constitution of these commissions, the act envises the constitution of Central and State Information Commission. So the Central Emission, uh, Information Commission shall be headed by a Chief Information Commissioner assisted by such number of Central Information Commissioner who shall be appointed by the President of Honorable President of India. Then it is same with the State uh, Information Commission too. It, uh, State uh, Information Commission is headed by Chief State, State Chief Information Commissioner and assisted by such number state information commissioner who shall be appointed by the governor of that uh, state. Now the powers of the commission. The act cast a duty on the information commission to receive and inquire into complaints from any person of the act. This is the power of the commission or this to hear complaints of public regarding request for information to hear complaint who has been refused access to information, to hear the complaint where a person has not received a response on his application within a specified period of time as per the act, to hear a person who believes that he has been given inco incomplete, misleading or false information under the act. Or then information commissions while Inquiring into complaint shall have same powers to some powers to as are uh, have same power as are vested in a civil court while while trying a suit. So info information commission has same power as civil court. So information commission can summon and enforce attendance of a person and compel them to give evidence or produce document in the uh, before the commission. So during the inquiry of any complaint under the act, the commission shall be entitled to examine any record which is under the control of public authority and the public authority shall not be entitled to withhold any such record on any grounds. Now the next topic is appeals. There are two tire mechanism which is provided under the act for the people who do not receive information from public information officers. The first appeal will be to the officer, to the higher officer or senior rank officer to PIO. So within 30 days from the expiry of the prescribed time limit. Then there is second appeal and ap an order passed by the appellate authority is appealable under the act. The second appeal shall be to the center or state information commission as the case may be. So the second appeal shall lie within 90 days from the date of decision of the first appellate authority. Now the next is burden of proof. So section 19.5 provides that any person preceding the owners to prove that a denial of request for information was justified shall be on the PIO who denied the request. So burden of proof is on the PIO. He has to produce the document so when he has denied the request, ki on what ground he has denied the request and penalty. Section 20 of the act empowers an information commissioner to 
impose penalty of 250 per day not exceeding 25,000 till the application requesting information is received or till such information is accepted. In addition to penalty, the Information Commission may take disciplinary action against the PIO if he's, he is found to be guilty, he is found to be at fault. So these are the topics I have discussed in this lecture. If any query is there, please do ask me. These are the questions which are related to the above topics. As I have already told you, this is the last topic, this is the last lecture of business law, of the curriculum of business law, which is taught in BBA, fourth semester of MDU, BBA course. Please ignore the writing mistake. If any, any, any inquiry is there, do contact me. Thank you, thank you so much.